Do you want to weave weird? In today's episode, we're going to show you how. Hey there, you beautiful heathen. Welcome to Iwell's Initiations. I'm your host, Matt Sargent. Thanks for tuning in. As I mentioned today, we're going to talk about weaving weird. And it's an art and a mystical discipline that is often uh, considered highly unattainable or very hard to do. Altering your feet, um, and if you don't understand the concepts, weird, ulog, word, etc., I'm going to recommend that you watch this video. Of course, finish this video out. And if you're saying, "Well, that doesn't make any sense," check out this video. There will be a link in the show notes as well, because that will give you the foundation for this kind of more advanced um, approach to working with weird, but. It's only advanced because we make it advanced in our heads. As I journeyed on my heathen path, at first I was not interested in the mystical aspects. I didn't have a lot of uh, draw or pull to learn the arts of the Vidki, um, the Norse sorcerer, um, or the Sademan. But as time went on, it became more and more clear that that is the path I was supposed to be walking in. As I started embracing the mystical aspects of Norse paganry or paganism, I studied a lot of outside um, sources that weren't necessarily Norse pagan or in origin. I did some studying of Siberian shamanism, Celtic shamanism, all sorts of mystical paths because we don't know a lot about what the Norse pagan, pagan occult arts looked like. They're very scant lore to begin with, and it is very true that today's uh, Norse pagan occultists are practicing a contemporary form of Norse pagan magic. And along those lines, I highly recommend Kurt Hoogstrat's book, Contemporary Saved, because at least he owns and acknowledges the fact that we are reclaiming this lost art. So if you're interested in checking out that book, there's a link in the show notes. Um, and of course, as you dive into this yourself, you're going to have to find what works for you and what doesn't work for you. But a key point in my training and education as a mentor of mine who wishes to remain anonymous once told me that a shaman or a magic worker's power, true power, comes in their personal responsibility. And at first that didn't mean much to me, but the more, the longer I've walked this path, the more I've walked this path, the more profound that statement really becomes. How does personal responsibility affect your ability to change your fate, your destiny? It's actually way simpler than it sounds. So when we look at the concept of weaving weird, you have, I mean, we're all currently right now watching this. You are in the Verdani, the president, and the president is dictated by the past. So your past actions, the actions of your family that you have inherited, they are all affecting your present tense. And it, you can't change the past. You can change how you're reacting to that. And you can do that through meditation, contemplation, um, and kind of rewiring your brain. That's something for a whole nother episode. If you're interested in learning how to do that, let me know. Leave a note in the show notes, um, comment, uh, change my past, something like that. Whatever you want, whatever's clever, I'll figure it out, I'm sure, but leave the note. But we can change our future. Uh, we can change our individual futures. My goal collectively is to change all of our futures and create a better Midgard for our descendants. And you can get a hint as to how I wanna change that by watching this video. But if we wanna change our fate, our destiny, Every action we take in the present becomes our Verdani. You know, next week, today is the past, right? Um, and it affects where we are right then and there. And every action we take in the present affects our future. So if you strongly want something, whatever the outcome, every action you take in the present needs to be focused on that outcome. And it might be something you're trying to change and have make happen in a week. It might be something that realistically can't happen for a year. Um, 
there are limit well technically there are limitations um, but some things take longer than others to develop but unless you accept responsibility for your role it's never going to happen and we can look at this in your own life or in the life of say the world like my goal is to create a better Midgard for everyone. That means that I have to make and take responsibility for my actions. Is everything I'm doing, or at least 90% of it, or everything I'm doing, at least to the best of my knowledge, creating a better tomorrow for my descendants? That means that I'm taking responsibility for it. I'm not passing it off on someone else, saying someone else should take care of this, etc. And once you really grasp how much power you really have, it can be kind of mind-boggling. But as soon as you give away your personal responsibility, your pers you lose your power. As soon as you say, oh, that's someone else's job, then you don't even have the power to affect your own life anymore because you're saying that that's someone else's responsibility. And I believe firmly that this is very tied into heathen beliefs because when we look at the Havamal, or even the modern interpretations of the Havamal that led to the Nine Noble Virtues, we see that um, self-righteousness, self-reliance um, are very big things and embracing your own power and being responsible for your outcome. Um, I hope this made sense to you. It's probably a shorter video than normal. Let me know what you're thinking. As always, thanks for tuning in. And if you want to learn more, watch this video right now.